Hello and welcome back to Polytudes. Today we're going to be taking a look at water ripples uh, for a shader when it's raining. We're going to be using Amplify Shader ed Editor for this. Uh, I do believe that most of this can be done in sh Shader Graph, but we are going to use a uh, Flipbook node, which as far as I'm aware, Shader Graph does have, so not Shader Graph, Shader Forge does not have. So um, I could be wrong about that. It's been a while since I've used it, but um, yeah, to my knowledge, Shader Graph, you can follow along. Shader Forge, I don't think you can, but obviously if you have Amplify Shader Editor, then you can as well. Um, and we're going to be looking at two versions. One is this one, which utilizes a normal map, uh, which is kind of happening over a uh, flipbook animation. So it's uh, a normal map. Uh, so that's the wrong one. Ripple's normal. So it's essentially a t texture sheet. Uh, so there's 16 frames of animation here and I'll also do a follow-up for sort of how I created this Because uh, I think I mean for the most part this like actually creating this texture was most of the work the actual shader is pretty straightforward So we're gonna be looking at this version, which is uh, probably my favorite uh, But then if you're looking for sort of a more simplistic approach, there is this other version here which uh, does not use a normal map uh, and it actually just uses this one little t tiny texture here uh, so it's pretty pretty cheap pretty you know inexpensive uh, and obviously it depends on the style that you're going for but uh, yeah so we're going to be doing these I'm going to start with the flipbook one uh, the nice one that I'm sure everyone probably wants to do uh, so we're going to get into that right now okay so here we are in a blank scene uh, so I'm just going to put down a plane obviously it can be whatever Ge geometry you want but I'll be using a plane just zero these out um, and then let's create a shader so amplify shader surface and let's just put this over here and let's, uh, let's stick it somewhere sensible so altitudes I'll call this flipbook rain and I'll commit that for now so we can just go ahead and uh, rename this one as well so and then we'll just create a material from that and put it on there so here we go and we have absolutely nothing um, so to give you just a quick sort of uh, glance as to what um, the flipbook stuff is actually doing it's pretty sort of self-explanatory but um, I'll just run through it real quick so we have uh, a f flipbook node in Amplify sh Shader Editor uh, and again I think sh Shader Graph has its own um, so you should be able to follow along just fine uh, we will get some UV coordinates in here and I don't know, we'll also just do this just as an example so we'll just say tiling we will keep all of this so you know it's not going to be uh, thrown away so we'll put that into there and I'm going to use just a like a sample texture which I know is going to be a 2x2 two two, if I can find it um, so we'll just put this into the albedo for now no sorry what am I doing I haven't it's my bad sorry we haven't actually specified a t texture input yet because I'm an idiot so we'll just call this uh, flipbook test I'll just when it comes to actually doing this again I'll just rename this node so we want that to go into there and then this will hook into the albedo so we're going to basically uh, we're doing a uh, texture sheet animation with this uh, and then we'll b b be able to control the uh, the tiling of it with this and we'll just commit that I'm gonna come down here and let's try and oh it's right here so that's pretty handy uh, we also probably want to set a speed somewhere so let's uh, let's do a time multiplied by a value call this one speed give it a default of one so this is just uh you know it's it's a very common setup for uh, controlling the speed of things uh, so now hopefully this should just work And of course it doesn't oh, okay I needed uh, 
a tiling of at least one. Uh, I forgot to put that in there. So yeah, you do want a default value of at least one. So this is the flipbook animation. And if I make this a property, then now we can also sort of control the speed. So you yeah. can go quicker. Uh, and the reason I'm just showing you this as an example is there there is uh, a bit of a problem uh, in that if I were to increase the tiling, you can see up here that there are actually sort of two areas where it's beginning to count down. And the more you increase the tiling, uh, it, basically half of these are right, half of these are wrong. Um, there is a fix for that. Uh, I did come across it on somebody else's YouTube channel, and for the life of me, I can't remember who it was, but I will track them down and I will post a link to their video in the description. Uh, yeah, so there is a fix for that and we will cover that when we actually put the, the proper thing together. So as it is now, uh, it's completely fine, but uh, all we're going to do is we'll take that out of the albedo and we're just going to rename this to uh, anything actually because we're not going to use this name. We want to get ourselves a uh, texture object. Uh, and the reason we want a texture object is uh, we will eventually want t t two of these, but uh, for now, just to keep things simple, uh, we just have one. So you could just have one, but you know we're just trying to save ourselves a bit of work later. So I'm going to call these ripple normals, and we will. Oh yeah. So in here we don't tell it to unpack because it has no idea. But here we just want to select unpack normal map, so it knows that. This texture will be a normal map and we will throw this into the normal and at the moment it's going to go a bit wrong uh, so we'll just grab our normal map here which uh, i will provide so you'll, you'll be able to uh, to do everything and just so we can see things a bit clearer i'm going to create a new float get a value of about 0.8 uh, we'll just call this wetness. We'll put it into smoothness. So this is basically a spec or gloss. Uh, so there we go. There's that. Uh, increase the speed. Looks pretty ugly right now, but uh, it will get better. So there's two issues that we kind of need to fix right now. One is uh, some of this Tiling is playing the animations backwards, as, as you saw with the uh, one, two, three, four example. Um, although before I get into that, one thing that I do need to change is my columns because the um, the one, two, three, four texture I was using was just a two by two. This is a sixteen frame animation, so we want to put that to a four by four. So okay, yeah. So that's a little easier but we still have the issue of uh some of these are playing backwards which for rain it's pretty it's pretty weird um and so we're going to fix this by using fract nodes where we basically split the u and the v and then append them back together so uh get a fract and get another one so one for the u one for the v and then just not an add sorry an append and then in the X and the Y, stick that in there, and that will work. So now you can see they're all playing the same. So the only issue we have to fix at the moment is, uh, you know, it's very easy to see the uh, the tiling of these. And uh, the way that we're going to fix that is basically by using uh, the same thing again, just slightly offset. Uh, but before we do that, uh, I will just, I'll introduce another float, um, which we will get rid of later, but for now it'll come in handy. So this will just be ripple strength, set it to a property. We'll put this in the scale, uh, just so we can control basically how strong these ripples are. And obviously it needs a default value, uh, default value, let's say 0.5. Essentially this is just the, uh, the component that controls the strength of the normal map. So you can have it kind of uh, softer or stronger. You can even go beyond one, but I don't recommend it. 
Uh, you can go into the minus if you wanted to invert it, which, you know, has proven pretty handy in some scenarios. But, so we'll just keep that a 0.5 for now. Um, yeah, we are eventually going to replace this with uh, something a lot better, something that will actually sort of help break up the tiling as well. But uh, for now, let's just focus on um, layering this thing. So I'm going to get the uh, the tiling amount sort of roughly where I think it should be, maybe eight or so. Uh, sort of imagining uh, like, as if this was sort of a uh, like a first person kind of scale. That might even be too big, but uh, it's okay for now. So what we probably want to move on to from here is we're going to get another texture sample and we'll do this. And we basically just want to do um, like the same stuff that we were doing here, but onto this one, but only, you know, offset ever so slightly. The only thing that we kind of need to keep is uh, the timing we can reuse this node. So everything else we're kind of just going to copy and paste over. So even the f f flipbook, which uh, is already set to 4x4, if you c copy and paste at least, otherwise make sure you put those back in. Uh, and so the time into the time, UVs into UVs, uh, and then again with the texture coordinates. And what I'm actually going to do is uh, I'm going to basically separate this node out a little bit here and I'm going to register it as a local variable. I'll just call this something like ripple tile and I'll put that into there and just give this a bit of a comment just so I don't accidentally think that it's an old set of nodes and I d delete it. And so now I can, uh, I can get that ripple tile and I'll put that into tiling. Uh, and the reason that I do that is so when I come down here and I copy these over here, uh, I can just get again ripple tile and put that into tiling. I mean, it wouldn't be the messiest thing in the world if we just had this running into that. In fact, you know, that's completely fine. Uh, but with the power of foresight and, you know, me having sort of made this before, we are going to be using this again elsewhere, so uh, that's why I'm basically splitting it into a register and a get. Uh, so anyway, let's just go ahead and throw this into the UV. Uh, we do want to mess with the offset though. And so what I'm actually going to do is, if you try to kind of do this like manually, and just keep sort of applying things and seeing how they look. Although bearing in mind we haven't actually hooked anything up yet, so uh, sorry about that. Let's just grab all of this and we will get a blend normals node because we're going to basically just blend these two together. And then I'll use another register uh, just so uh, we don't have lines going sort of all the way across. And we'll just register this as uh, ripple normals. So then we'll just get ripple normals. Okay, so now we're going to actually see both. Yeah, as you can see, it's pretty uh, pretty crazy. Um, there's a couple of things we can do here. Uh, first and foremost, I do want to just get down a vector two, and I'll put that into tiling and. Uh, ah, sorry, not tiling. I'll put that into offset. Keep that as tiling. Um, and I'm going to put in a divide node here, and I'm going to hook that into tiling. So basically, what's going to happen here is I'm dividing my t tile amount by an amount that is yet to be determined. Uh, I'll work that out in a minute. And the reason that I have this vector two here is I'm going to basically visualize the offset myself on the actual material and then I'll just re remember what those values are and so then I can put them into the texture coordinates or you could just leave them as um, as they are with the other uh, vector too um, but I prefer to keep things a bit sort of tidier not use too many nodes so first things first we're going to keep I think 0.9 might, might be okay actually. Um, 
let's uh let's see what happens if we change this value essentially this is uh controlling the tiling of one of them so you can either make it bigger or smaller than the other without having to actually uh create like a different tiling uh property so we we still only have one which is controlling both but what we're doing here in the shader is we're saying that one will always be bigger than the other so you know it helps keep things a bit simple and I'm actually kind of okay with 0.6 so now with my offsets I'm going to just uh, play with them here and I'm just going to try and sort of position them in a way that I think sort of hides the tiling the best it was kind of okay where it was I mean it helps that the um, the tile amount itself has changed so that's going to create a lot of sort of randomization uh, there is a very straight line that moves down here but uh, I mean for the most part it's pretty good like um, it's kind of hard to tell where it's all happening now so imagine later on you know these are going to be sort of not as strong you're going to have your own sort of textures and different normal maps of those textures sort of overlaying so uh, it's yeah I mean you'd be hard pressed to find the tiling once all of this stuff is kind of layered on so anyway I'm just going to do what I said I was going to do so I'm going to copy these values so I'll take this offset node out and 0.77 and 0.53 is what I'm happy with it could be different for you you know you don't need to follow these number by number and so now if I just commit that we get the exact same result and the shader itself is sort of you know it's nice and uh, it's nice and clean um, yeah so that's kind of that bit and so the next thing we need to do is I mean aside from just comment let's say ripple normals, normals. I need to work on the the masking uh, because essentially this is uh, you know this is too many raindrops and we've already kind of hidden a bit of the tiling with um, the other tiling and the offset but the fact that these like all of these are appearing at the same time and they're just full you know it's it's a bit much uh, even if you were to kind of like lessen the effect and bring these normals kind of down uh, although it helps actually if uh, ripple strength here was also attached to our second normal map So yeah, even if you were to do that, uh, it's still a bit unconvincing, in my opinion. I think there's still too much going on. I think uh, I think we can do a lot to to help this along. So I'll put that back up to say I don't know 0.4 or something. I think 0.5 is a bit too strong on its own. Bearing in mind there's nothing else happening here. We're only seeing the ripples, so it will appear to be quite strong. Um, so yeah, we're going to move on to the masking. And I don't know if this is, you know, necessarily the best way to do this. Um it was the first thing that kind of popped to my mind, but uh essentially what I'm going to do is use a uh a noise mask to control the scale. So at the moment we have this uh ripple strength value which um, you know on its own you can make it weak or you can make it strong and so my idea was you have this sort of tiling noise mask uh, that is just panning and you use the black and white values of that to control the strength of the normal map so it would kind of it would almost sort of give this effect of not all the raindrops are sort of equally as strong as each other and it also helps to create this sort of fake almost like a, a wind effect uh, depending on how you do it so yeah we're going to basically just do that right now uh, so the first thing we're going to want to do is a noise generator and if shader graph or shader forge don't have this i mean i'm pretty sure shader forge does not but if shader graph does not have a uh, a noise generator node um, you can use any sort of tiling just noised texture in fact there's probably something I mean uh, so yeah anything that kind of looks like this 
uh, which you can easily make like in Photoshop using like the clouds filter. That is completely fine for this. Uh, yeah, so don't worry if you don't have this. Uh, the texture will work just the same. Um, and so let's, uh, let's get a UV coordinate because what we're going to want to do is uh, pan this basically. So let's get a panner as well. And we'll hook this into the UVs of the panner and then out into the noise generator. I'm going to hit the uh, the P key so we can actually see a bit what's going on. Probably should have been doing that down here. Uh, sorry about that. Now it's messy as all hell. Um, I'll fix that up in a second. So yeah, sorry, I should be working with these previews open. Uh, yeah, so from here, you know, obviously we increase the tiling, we get different noise and it's the exact same thing if you were to use a texture uh, like so, so long as it t tiles at least obviously if it isn't a tiling texture don't expect it to tile um, so let's go ahead and we're going to use the, um, the get here because um, I might be wrong about this I might want to change this but essentially we have another t tiling node here and we have these nodes, which we were using to kind of control the tiling. And so let's see if this number will actually be any good. It might be, might be too small, might be too big. It might be just right. Who knows? That is the moral of the story of Goldilocks and the three little bears or is it just the three bears just the three bears i guess only one of them was little so yeah there's a noise generator there's a panner which isn't moving at the moment so uh, again i'm just going to go time we're going to multiply that by a value and so this will be i guess um uh you know i don't know if you want to make this component an actual property so for now i'm going to leave it private and i'll just I'll give it a random value and we'll just test it out because uh, we're already controlling the tiling here so the idea at least is once you've kind of set this in like your real world scale you shouldn't need to adjust some of this stuff but you know, that's it's very short-sighted of me to say so uh, that's okay fine let's just do it let's just make it a property and we'll just call this mask speed or ripple mask speed just so everybody's on board um, yeah and so this is going to go into the time of our panner because at the moment it's not doing anything and so for the speed uh, I don't know let's say one 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 probably should be fine and I mean that's pretty much it we might tinker with this a bit in, in a minute um, so we're going to register and we'll call this ripple mask and then we'll come down to here and all right this is a mess okay i'm just going to speed through the video real quick while i just fix this ungodly mess that'll do uh, and then we'll just give this a comment as well I'll just call this ripple mask and so before we were using this ripple strength here to control the strength uh, which we don't want to do anymore so we're going to get rid of that and we're going to get that ripple mask that we just made so check that into scale and check that into scale and already it looks like i've done something wrong but we'll see okay uh, no it seems okay Um, yeah, we're probably going to give it the same treatment as we did with the normal maps actually where we're going to actually use another one of these no noises and we'll have it pan the other way uh, which could could help us out a bit so I'm going to need this to be a lot bigger uh, so yeah, essentially we just need obviously another noise generator and we're going to need another panner and this textures 
and the time we're going to keep so we'll put the time into there so these share the same thing and I'm happy with the tiling so I am going to just get the ripple tile again and I'll put that into there so you see already this is kind of like it's p paid off a bit by creating this little ripple comment that's weird ripple tile um, so now we don't have just all these nodes going all over the place and we can keep everything in their own sort of separate little boxes which uh, is just wunderbar so yeah so let's just go ahead and stick this into that the only thing we do want to do is before with the panel we're using one and one so we'll do minus one and minus one and then we will just essentially add these two together uh, and this does create some pretty nice effects like I mean there's a lot that you can do with this node chain here. Um, it lends itself well to, you know, liquidy, watery kind of stuff because when things get close, I mean, you, you can see for yourself what it's doing. So, so, yeah. So, don't think that this is just for rain ripple masking. This has so many uses when, when it comes to shaders. And so, we'll stick this in here. And I guess we didn't actually need that much space. So, let's tidy that up a little bit and see how this looks okay so it sort of comes and goes sometimes you get these gaps and sometimes you don't uh, I think my speed is a little too low I mean this just looks crazy I hope that I'm recording at 60 frames per second because otherwise this is just gonna look like basically uh, yeah, so let's just continue. And what I'm going to do is with this mask. I think I think we can make this a little bit better. So I'm going to I'm going to introduce something where we can actually control the uh the power of it. So let's just uh multiply this and get a float here. Put that into there, put that into there. And so now the idea hopefully at least is you can control the strength of it. You don't want to be too strong because we're going to get like a bit of a cutoff, but let's just say um, uh, mask strength for now. I feel like I could think of a better name, but obviously I can't. Okay, wow, that might have been a bad thing. Uh, let's make it a property. Default of three is probably a bit too much. Okay, no, that's fine. So essentially what this is doing is it acts the same as that other uh, strength thing that we had. In fact, yeah, we don't want to call this mask strength. It's the exact same float that we were using before. If you remember uh, when we were doing the, uh, don't want the default value to be so high. So when we first put in these normal maps, we were controlling their scale with just a slider but we wanted it to be a little bit more random. Uh, whereas now we kind of have the best of both worlds in that we have this mask, which will kind of do uh, its sort of nice stuff. Where it's white, it will essentially try to make the strength of the normal map high. Where it's low, it'll try to n null it out. But then we also have this um, slider. So we'll put this as a default value um, of half. And we'll get Z zero to one so we still have this slider which is uh just great so you can say that it's not raining anymore and then you can say psych it's raining loads which uh you know pretty handy um i feel like there's something that i am forgetting here but i'll move on a bit just uh just to kind of hook up some of the actual the uh the base maps so Let's go ahead and do this one. Uh, so these are the uh, you know the textures that you would be using. So this is your, your base sort of albedo, and we'll multiply that by another texture, which will be your ambient occlusion. Occlusion. I always forget how to spell occlusion. Two C's, two S's. Who knows? I think that's right, but whatever. 
Uh, so then we'll put these together. Uh, and then also, just because it's cool, we'll also add in a, uh, a tint color. Uh, we'll default it as white. And uh, I don't know if we can just put that onto there. Maybe we can. Maybe that's not the smartest thing to do. It's probably not the smartest thing to do. So let's multiply this by that. And then maybe multiply that by that. I'll test this before I actually finish this video because I might have just messed this all up. I don't have an ambient occlusion for the texture that I'm going to be using, but theoretically this should work. Uh, so register and albedo. And then we'll come over to here and we'll get an albedo, stick that in there. And yeah, then we want another one. So let's just comment this and we'll just say albedo. Uh, and then we just want your base sort of normal map. Normal bit. Wow, I cannot type and think at the same time. Uh, and this, uh, this doesn't really need anything fancy um, happening. Make sure you unpack normal map if you're using a normal map. Um, if you want, you could hook something up to the scale, uh, you know, and same as this, if you wanted to control the strength of the normal map that you were putting in, that's where you would do it. I don't think I'm going to bother just to keep this a bit clean. It's probably going to get very cluttered. And even though this is just a single node, I'm still going to register it because I'm a weirdo like that. So let's just say normals, uh, base normals, just so I don't forget that in there. And then come over here and get base normals. Put that into, oh yeah, no, sorry. We need to do a blend because we're already using the normal map channel so blend operations we're going to blend our ripple normals that's wow that's not what i want we're going to blend normals sorry there we go into there into there so now the ripple normals are going to be blended with the normals of our texture that we put it in and before i hit that big old commit uh, i'm going to tidy this up a bit so i'll have tiling at the top and then i'll have my albedo I mean, occlusion, normal map. Okay, and now it looks a bit funky because it wants some inputs uh, that we don't have yet. Uh, so let's see, it'll be while well, that was up to like 12 or something. So, albedo. Uh, again, I'm just going to use my tried and trusted normal map, pebble. There you go. I mean, already that just looks pretty wet. Uh, so we have tiling here, which is not the tiling that we want actually. So um, we actually need to hook that up. So tiling, we'll call this ripple tiling. And probably don't want it at the top of the shader because that might confuse someone who uses it. So the way that I like to do things is um, I kind of prefer to have like the texture and then the corresponding, uh, you know, variables for that texture and then the next texture and the corresponding variables for that texture. So, you know, it's all relatively straightforward. Um, so yeah, we have ripple tiling, um, just commit that. So now ripple tiling there and there we go pretty nice. Uh, but we don't have anything to control the tiling of our actual texture yet. So let's uh, get a UV coordinate and we'll get a flow value. So we'll call this one base tiling or texture tiling or just tiling. Tiling's fine. And we'll put that into there. Give it a default value of one. Otherwise everything's going to look weird. And let's just hook this into UVs, into UVs there, and we also want it to go into the normal map UVs. Uh, so let me just normal map, and because I don't want to, uh, nah, you know what, I will. 
I'll just do pen into there. I don't usually like doing this because, you know, now if I want to move this, these kind of have to come with it, which means this kind of has to come with it. But, you know, whatever. It's no, no biggie. Okay, so there's that. And did I set my tiling to some ridiculous amount? It's a bit strange. Oh, the tiling for some reason is eight. It's just uh, two, four. Okay, and let's put the tiling at the top of the shader. And four is maybe a bit much. Two is probably okay. Uh, yeah, so this is already looking pretty good. There is really only one more thing that I would like to add, which is um, at the moment we we're sort of controlling kind of like how wet this looks by just um, the wetness value, which did we lose? Am I blind? Did I take it out? Wetness? Oh, it's not a property. Well done, me. And so there's a wetness and this should be a slider to be fair, because there's no point in going below zero or above one. Um, so yeah, this is kind of what we have to specify whether or not this is wet. And it does look nice, to be fair, uh, but there is something else we can do. I'll just make the tint as well a property. Apparently I keep forgetting to give things property values. So there's that, and it's white. Neat. Uh, yeah, so we're going to be using another normal map basically to create a little bit of uh, water movement here. And again, we're going to be able to control the strength of it. So uh, you can either have it like like some sort of f flood, like this thing is just completely like covered in water, um, or you could just you know have a little bit of it sort of trickling away. Um, but I mean, if you were happy with how it looked. As it is and you don't need anything extra then by all means just stop watching and mess up my analytics but uh yeah if not then carry on because we we're gonna go do that right now so the first thing i guess that we're gonna want to do is make ourselves another uh texture sample because we're going to be using another normal map um although again we're going to be using two of these but uh, for now we'll just uh just stick with one so say puddle normals and um, let's use a register like immediately and we'll call this puddle norms and let's get some UV coordinates in here and we'll use um, the same tiling as the, uh, the base texture uh, maybe we might want to split it but for now we'll just uh you know what no 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 so sorry if this is a bit confusing i was about to sort of say that we should use the uh the tiling that we already have for our base textures um so that when you scale the tiling of your main texture the water will also kind of scale with it but i can imagine some scenarios where you might not want that to happen so now you know what, I'm, 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 I'm a big fat liar. I'm going to do it anyway. We're going to use the same tiling just to keep things nice and simple. Um, yeah, I do have a bit of a, I don't know, a fear, I suppose, of just like crazy complicated shaders that just don't need to be so complicated, just like a million things like this. Hopefully this is kind of within the realms of self-explanatory, but some of the things out there are just dinky donk so anyway, we're going to hook this into UVs, into UVs, and we'll push this now. Push it. Why am I speaking like this? this is some sort of SVN repository? It's not. Um, so we should have, unless I did something wrong. I think I didn't press the button. That will probably be it. Oh, I'm an idiot. I'm an idiot. I haven't actually hooked it up to the get. So I'm just going to hit the P key up just for a second here because no, you know it doesn't matter. Um, it always seems like it doesn't matter how organized you try to make it. Eventually everything kind of comes here. And so this is where it gets kind of messy. So I mean, if anyone from the Amplify team 
uh, are watching, it would be pretty great if you could actually kind of like scale this a bit. Like so you pull it down and the spacing on these would increase. That would just be fantastic. But uh, for now, it's fine. It's just, you know, you try to make things clean and they can't be clean. No biggie. So there's a normal blend, blend normal, blend normals again, and we're going to do these ones, so we're not using that, and we'll get our new puddle normals. Put that into there, and put that one into normals. Sorry if I'm not zoomed in enough to see what's kind of going on, hopefully I'm explaining it okay. If I had a bigger monitor, this wouldn't be a problem, but... Well, not a bigger monitor, a uh, bigger resolution. So, okay, so we have this, and it just wants a normal map to go into it. Uh, bearing in mind, if you don't have uh, a normal map, then, you know, don't, because this shader is looking for um, normals, and there isn't any, so it's messing up. So, um, anyway, let's I must have something in here, water or something. You can use any kind of, like, noise generated uh, stuff. So let's water bump and let's mess around a bit with the scale. So I'm going to put in a divide node and a temporary float which will make a property. Put that into tiling and I'm also going to give us a another one. This one will be a property that we'll keep and this will be puddle strength. So we can control the strength of it, because uh, like when it's like really strong, then it looks uh, like everything's kind of flooded. So we'll put it at 0.3 as a default value. And so this is a property. That's a property. So okay, let's get the strength of this, or okay, some things are not quite right. Oh tiling needs to be at least one. Okay, so let's hide our ripples for now. So ripple strength, we'll bring that down. Um, so we're looking at essentially uh, trying to just sort of change the scale of this uh, puddle normal map. Doesn't seem to be going very well. Have I hooked everything up correctly? Blend normals, blend normals, puddle normals. Seems to be working. Yeah, I mean, we know it's there because I can see it because it's all noisy. But, um, yeah, for some reason. Ah, okay, let's just do this manually. So we'll have this one as. Uh, puddle tiling. Uh, and then meanwhile I'll try to work out why that wasn't working, I guess. So definitely normal map, puddle strength, everything's okay there. Uh, puddle tiling, make sure the default value is 1. Okay, so I mean that, that works, so I have no idea why why it wouldn't work if we were just doing it as I was doing it before, but no biggie. Um, little tiling, probably want that to be kind of small. And again, this is one of those things like the strength, for the most part, you might want it a, a bit low unless it is, you know, torrential. And when we get some movement in this, ah, oh, it's going to be good, I assure you. So let's give ourselves some water ripples back. In fact, no, 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 no. Let's let's not complicate the visuals. So let's get a, uh, a texture object, and so this one was called puddle normals, but um, we'll just call it something random because this one is going to be called puddle normals. And put that into texture, and then get another texture sample and that into that. So now we have. Uh, two. Oopsie. Make sure I unpack normal map. Now we have two normal maps. And put the scale and scale. 
try to tidy this up a little bit. So these values will be shared. Um, the only ones that won't are going to be the UVs. Um, so, uh, sorry, not the UVs. The UVs will be shared. The panning won't, and we don't have a panner yet. Um, so, panner. And so let's just stick this into the V. And rather than doing that whole like time multiplied by speed thing, all I'm going to do is create another property and we'll call this one puddle speed. And I'm going to just put this into speed and then uh, the time. I think uh, if we put this, not that one, let's find my water, common text, water bump. No offset, uh, puddle speed, default value of one. Oh my god, I'm I'm sorry, I must be out of my mind. I haven't actually hooked up the UVs to it. So put that into there and bring this speed right the way down. And uh, everything else. Seems to be fine. Default value of one on the puddle tiling. Uh, that always seems to catch me out. Like when I do t tiling of things, I, I forget the uh, the default value, and then I wonder why nothing shows up. So there we go. So that's moving there, and we'll be able to control the speed um, through here. Although we're probably going to want some crazy low values. Neato. So now what we can do is we can get panner, and you see this panner, uh, the time and the UVs. All we need to do is put this into speed, grab our UVs, put that into there. Now they're both going at the same way, but all we can do, I think, is just minus the time on the pattern node itself. So uh, pretty simple, kind of messy, but uh, you know, hopefully that makes sense. So now we have two of these moving in opposite directions and they're controlled um, well, both with the same thing, with the tiling, with the speed, with the strength, it's uh, synergized. So let's blend these two together, blend normals, and then there's that, which is, you know, it's your, uh, the beginnings of your bog standard water shader, but we're just using it for a puddle, so uh, let's just comment everything, we'll just call this puddle. Um, okay, I think, I mean that's pretty much it. So puddle, just gonna tidy up the shader itself a bit here. So puddle normals go there and then all of the components underneath it. The only thing I think that's a bit out of place is wetness, but uh, it's fine. Okay, so the speed is definitely, definitely wants to be constrained. And let's put our ripples back in. Mm, they seem a bit weak. Uh, so let's keep doing that. And. I've already forgotten what this ripple mask speed node did. Huh. Well, okay, so let's go to uh, ripple normals. I think there is something that I'm forgetting here, but uh, let's just have a quick peruse. So we have ripple speed, and let's have a look at our mask. So we have the strength, and then the ripple mask speed. Okay, no, no, that's pretty self-explanatory, I think. Uh, it's a bit sparkly. I wonder if that's because of... Yeah, it's probably because of post-processing. And now it's incredibly dark. Great. Um, yeah, so I think, I think we have everything we need here. We just need to fiddle about with 
uh, the actual sort of scale of things and the strength of things and the speed of things to uh, get things looking kind of just right. So with the puddle, again, like I don't want anything particularly too big. And puddle speed. I mean, it's very easy for that to kind of get a bit crazy, so it be 0.2 for now. Uh, yeah, I don't know. I mean, this is basically the end of the tutorial, because I don't think I have anything left. I will be doing uh, another tutorial where I show raindrops that sort of don't use the normal map, and they just use, um, you know, a very sort of basic texture, uh, just just this one. But obviously if you wanted something sort of cartoony that uses the uh, flipbook style of thing anyway, then um, uh, you don't need to have this as a normal map. I mean, because this started life as just, uh, I mean, this is going to break everything, but I'll just, I'll do this. So this is just a, a black and white map, essentially. And uh, again, as I said before, I will do a, like a quick little video on 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 how to how it is uh, i'm i made this uh just in case someone finds it interesting um that's pretty much it um the idea now i guess is just sort of play with the values find something that you like if uh if the raindrops are kind of too framey for your liking then uh essentially all you need is uh more frames in your f flipbook and animation uh, or a higher speed, um, but uh, you know if it's too high, then it would look weird. It, uh, yeah, no, that's about it. It does look a bit dark. I'm not sure why. Um, I've I have actually had this issue before with Amplify, where I've had to basically uh, recreate some albedo nodes and whatnot. But in fact, we were talking about this earlier. I think I may have done something a bit weird here. So. Uh, uh, hello, this is me from the future. Uh, remember I was having some issues with the ambient occlusion multiplied by this tint and the albedo that makes everything dark even though the color is set to white. Um, I've already finished recording but I've just uh, realized my mistake um, and the problem is is that I'm multiplying um, the color by the albedo and I, I don't introduce this tint to the ambient occlusion so um, I, if you wanted, you could try, and but bear in mind this won't work, but I'm just going to put this here because you might think that this is the solution, but it's not. If you were to change that to an add, it solves half of your problem in that we no longer get the uh, the darkness, uh, but now we can't really control the tint too much. Like It changes a bit, but really not too much, so um, we do want this to be a multiply, and uh, the fix is uh, it's just a case of hooking uh, the tint into the end multiply. So it's running through everything. So now if I do this, uh, and now everything should be normal. So we can change the tint as, as expected, and you have uh, a slot for ambient occlusion. Uh, as I said, I don't have one, but you know, anything that would be an ambient occlusion would would work so uh yeah that's that now i guess carry on with the rest of my tutorial and i assure you that was like the only mistake i made so enjoy yeah so that is that uh i hope you learned something um and if there's anything that i kind of went over too fast or um you just you know something that didn't make sense then uh, let me know uh, as i said i will be providing this uh ripple sheet the only thing you need to make sure is uh, by default it will be a black and white map so uh, if you're using unreal or something else um, you'll have to convert it to a normal map but if you're using unity then uh yeah just make sure you convert it to a normal map basically i've set mine to sort of smooth and this value doesn't really matter too much. Um, you can obviously control the strength of it as well here. So, you know, if you didn't want it to be happening too, too much, 
just these little kind of you know like like the sort of the remnants of rain uh yeah up to you so yeah again thank you for watching uh, i hope you learned something and i'll be back with uh, another ripple tutorial uh, this one not using the normal map but just a a, a pretty cool tip um, that i picked up on from some unreal tutorial so yeah that's it goodbye hope it was good